Another icon I wrote about was uh, a set of drawings made by 19th century Darwinist, German Darwinist, Ernst Haeckel, of vertebrate embryos. Now Darwin knew that the fossil evidence was not particularly helpful to his theory. So in Darwin's own opinion, the best evidence for his theory was what we see in embryos. And he believed and wrote in The Origin of Species that embryos in the same class or group are most similar in their early stages and become different only as they develop. In fact, he thought that the early stages show us the form of the ancestor in its original form. Ernst Haeckel made some drawings based on this idea that embryos are most similar in their earliest stages and become different only later on. And these, these drawings became quite famous. They show, uh, typically in the first row, embryos that look almost identical. And these are embryos supposedly of fish, salamander, turtle, chicken, and various mammals. And then as they develop, these embryos become more and more different until we see the actual adult fish, salamander, turtle, and so on. Many modern biology textbooks include Haeckel's drawings as evidence for evolution. Uh, I, I was surprised at how many I saw. And yet, Haeckel faked the drawings. Some of his own colleagues, embryologists, accused him of fraud during his own life. The reason his drawings misrepresent the evidence, actually there are three reasons. First of all, the embryos that he portrays as being virtually identical are not. A good embryologist can see the differences and actually uh, in 1997 uh, British biologist Michael Richardson and his colleagues published a now famous article in Anatomy and Embryology comparing Haeckel's drawings to actual embryos and showing that Haeckel faked the data. The other thing that's wrong with Haeckel's drawings is that he selected very carefully. He has eight rows in his classic drawing. Uh, four of them are mammals. But he excluded various vertebrates that don't fit the pattern. For example, he doesn't have sharks. He doesn't have lampreys or eels, which are very different. He uses a salamander instead of a frog, because a frog doesn't look like that at all. And among the mammals, he leaves out the platypus and the kangaroo, which are different divisions of the, ma the mammal group. And uh, he only includes mammals that happen to look very similar. So he, ch we call it cherry picking. He cherry picked the embryos he chose to show and then he distorted them to make them look more similar than they really are. And for me as a scientist, the, the worst thing about Haeckel's drawings is that he totally leaves out the earliest stages of embryo development. The embryos that he portrayed as being the earliest are actually midway through development. When you go back and look at the earliest stages of fishes and amphibians and birds and so on, mammals, they look very, very different. So instead of early similarity developing into later differences, we have early differences converging midway on certain similarities, which he exaggerated, and then diverging again as the embryos develop. Uh, it doesn't fit Darwin's pattern at all. In fact, if you were to follow Darwin's logic, you'd have to say the different classes of vertebrates had, a, had different ancestors, and then for some unknown reason, become similar halfway through development, and then become dissimilar again. So the logic and the evidence don't fit. So after I wrote about Haeckel's embryos in 2000, the, uh, the pattern uh, among people who were critical of my book uh, became uh, quite typical. Uh, first, they, uh, they started quietly taking the drawings out of the textbooks, okay? Haeckel's embryos are hard to find in textbooks now, although there's actually still some that have them. Or they replaced Haeckel's drawings with redrawn versions, or in some cases with actual photographs, but the photographs are only of those embryos and those stages that happen to fit the Darwinian story. So the evidence is still being widely misrepresented in textbooks. At the same time, I was personally vilified by many of my critics as a liar, as being stupid. 
I'm, I'm actually trained as an embryologist, and yet they said, obviously, I didn't learn anything from my Berkeley PhD because I didn't know anything about embryology. Interestingly enough, Jerry Coyne, who is a fly geneticist, when he attacked my book, he attacked me primarily, as far as the science goes, on my portrayal of vertebrate embryos, my own specialty. Uh, but perhaps the most egregious uh, attack on me and my credibility came with a film called Flock of Dodos by uh, evolutionary biologist turned filmmaker Randy Olson. And in the film he uh, has me on camera as saying that uh, the embryos misrepresent the truth and the textbooks still have them. And then he tries to show uh, in subsequent scenes that the, the embryos really are not in the textbooks and that no biologist takes them seriously anymore. Well, he knew at the time, because Icons of Evolution actually cites eight textbooks with Heckel's embryos, uh, he knew that what he was saying wasn't true. And he was later then confronted with other textbooks, more recent ones, that still have Heckel's embryos in them. And he decided to go ahead with the film anyway because he liked the story he was telling. But it has absolutely nothing to do with the truth. The truth is, Heckel's embryos were used in textbooks all over the place for a century after they were known to be fake. And I think this is an outrageous example of how some Darwinists misrepresent the evidence to prove their theory. After this compromising confession of forgery, I should be obliged to consider myself condemned and annihilated if I had not the consolation of seeing side by side with me in the prisoner's dock hundreds of fellow culprits, among them many of the most trusted observers and most esteemed biologists. The great majority of all the diagrams in the best biological textbooks, treaties, and journals would incur in the same degree the charge of forgery, for all of them are inexact, and are more or less doctored, schematized, and constructed. This admission by Haeckel shows that falsehood and deception are techniques frequently resorted to by evolutionists and that they have no hesitations about persisting in them. Yet these illustrations, which everyone knew to be false, were nevertheless taught as a scientific reality in textbooks all over the world throughout the course of the 20th century.